I just feel like, you know, with someone telling you, like, oh, you need to go on a diet, it's not a nice feeling. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I just took an ovulation test because Jack said not to do the pregnancy test because we want to wait. I don't know how it could be a smiley face because I've already ovulated this month. Could it be that I'm ovulating right now, even though I'm due on my period today? And she said, no, there's just no possible way. And she said, how I found out I was pregnant was an ovulation test. Then I, I think I might be pregnant. Oh, I'm shaking. My hands are like... Mm. Mm. Hola, hola. ¿Qué tal? No, don't film me. Yeah, we're back. Uh, so I went through a little bit of your files, uh, yeah. so uh, I, I would need to ask you a little bit more questions, yeah. if that's alright. Okay. First, I need to uh, ask you the very basic question. Can, mm -hmm. you, can you give me your height? I think I'm at about 160 centimetres. I'm sadly only 175 centimetres. Uh, Real weight, please? Real, please. I'm probably about 70, 71. Okay. Are you sure about 71 kilograms? Yeah, pr probably. What do you look like? Yeah, I am. I'm quite heavy. <laughs> well, yeah, because, okay, I will just show you that your weight uh, might, in that case, is a little bit too high, so mm. maybe you can check it. Mm. It's about 10, 11 stone one, so yeah. that weighed yesterday. Yeah, and I was I was two stone heavy than that, okay. uh, about a year ago. If that's true, then I would like you, before yeah. uh, you're trying to conceive, to go on the diet, the low sugar diet, yeah. to exercise, all right? Because when we start the pregnancy with a, a high BMI like yeah. this, then we have a, a higher risk of, of pregnancy complication, like diabetes, yeah. uh, hypertension, um, preterm labor, we don't like that, so that would yeah. be fantastic if you can do a go I'm already on that journey because, like I yeah. said, I lost two stone last year, so yeah. I'm coming down. Try because the yeah. best would be if you can go down to 24 at least, or even the best 22 BMI, okay? But yeah. it's too high now. Yeah. Uh, what is your weight? Please? I'm exactly the same, I'm 71. <laughs> I got weighed yesterday at, uh, okay. at the okay, doctor's. Okay, so we have this, all right. So uh, this is important. So for yeah. me, um, because you are young people, it's not a, such a rush that we have to do immediately something. We can wait and get you prepared, all right? Mm -hmm. So let's try to go down with the weight. Yeah. Fantastic. Two, three kilograms. You're young. Yeah. It should not be such a problem for you. But if we, if you, you cannot go farther, please contact me. Then I can offer you maybe small doses of metformin because sometimes it makes it easier for you. I do find it more challenging to lose weight. Guys, if you are not already following me on Instagram, I'm a lot more active on there than I am on YouTube. Trying to be more active and get more regular with my videos over here on YouTube. But yeah, if you aren't following me already on Instagram, make sure you do. I do daily vlogs, I do makeup hauls. I also share a lot more in depth of my fertility journey on there, like my daily journey. So head over there now if you're not following me already. Thank you. I went through your files, and from what <coughs> I understand, please correct me if I'm wrong, six years you're trying to get pregnant. Mm -hmm. Could I just add a little bit of information to that six years? Yes. I was taking a hair tablet called Finasteride. Okay, yes. Finasteride Propecia. Finasteride. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had several sperm tests. I had one in the UK, and then I had two over here, and all of my sperm results were very low. I stopped taking that about mm -hmm. maybe a year or 18 months ago. I, I had a test three months later mm -hmm. and the results were on their way back up. I had a test six months later mm -hmm. and they were above average. Mm -hmm. but this is obvious that when you take anti-androgenic drugs, uh, your sperm can go down. So, mm -hmm. uh, so I, uh, I think that it has nothing to do for your future sperm results. Yeah, but I'm saying that could have affected the last six years of trying. Yeah, it yes. might not have been Tay, right. it could have been Here myself. So now it's probably only an 18 months. how long have you been taking them, sir? I've been taking them for about seven years, so longer ah, than we've okay. been trying. So honestly, we can say that we have one and a half years of... Uh, of yeah, that's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Okay, if so, then we can continue with IUI. I, it's not, I don't want to continue with IUI. That's why we have to discuss, because yeah. you have a suspicion 
that you have an endometriosis. And I know that Dr. Arantxa didn't confirm it, but still the cyst was um, written to be quite big. So yeah. if we have stage three, we go straight to IVF. If we have stage one or two with the possible tubes, then we can do three IUIs with stimulation. If you are not pregnant, then we go to IVF. IUI in your age group should have maximum percentage of 15% per cycle. Mm. So that's of course your choice. IUI is 15%. What is the chances of IVF in this instance, I guess? It depends if we have or not uh, endometriosis. Uh, the chances that we give around the world in your uh, age group, they're before 30, they're about 40% per cycle. Is there any sort of risks to Taylor or her eggs or anything like that? You are in the risk group of hyperstimulation. Yeah. That is one of the basic reasons why I will not do the first transfer. Okay. Because the biggest risk is when you get pregnant in, the, uh, in that cycle. Because it's hardly not recommended with endometriosis. Yeah. But if, but if I don't have endometriosis? Then we can think about it. Right. But you have high HMA. Risk of hyperstimulation. When do the the worst hyperstimulation we have? You know when? When the patient gets pregnant in the fresh cycle. Okay. This is the highest risk. Okay. Nowadays we have higher, better results with the frozen. Why? And if you have endometriosis, especially. Yeah. If you, of course, don't have endometriosis and you go very mildly with the stimulation, I doubt, but we'll see then we can consider to do the fresh transfer, but now we don't have the question. Yeah. Uh, this is only an initial plan. Yeah. yeah. Okay? Before doing anything, I would love you to do the test for the insulin. Yeah. Because then I want you to take for three months the, the um, metformin. So let's exclude the endometriosis first. Yeah. Yeah. Because then we have plenty of time. We can wait one year and a half. From the medical point of view, mm -hmm. I don't have to do IVF, but what if I have endometriosis stage 3, we go straight. So that's why, uh, let's maybe meet again, mm -hmm. yeah. right? if you can make at least the, uh, this test, the insulin test for me, these are, then we will talk also about metformin, and you start taking this, okay? okay. And then we will talk again, to do IVF or not. Yeah. All right? Yes. So because to do IVF, then you come back again, this cycle, following cycle, before menstruation. Yeah. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm a bit lost. Uh, I am. Uh, too much. Uh, did I say too much? No, it's just that no, we've not, not really heard about IVF. Oh, what, sorry. And Giselle will write you this, what I wrote here nicely. Okay? Don't get over. Okay. 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 okay, don't worry. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Also, if you haven't already checked it out, I now have my own website, which is tayblue.com, where every single thing that I'm recommending through Instagram, whether it be beauty, home buys, fashion buys, stuff to aid fertility, it's all on there, it's all linkable, and you can basically just shop very, very simply through the website without going through a gazillion Instagram highlights. Fox. <laughs> Honestly, I, th I I feel a little bit tearful because I really didn't enjoy that. Um, I mean, obviously, that was a new doctor mm. who's extremely um, clued up. Like, she's the best, seems like the best, most knowledgeable woman I've ever met in my life. I think it was completely different sort of technique to the other lady mm. that we had who was very um, peaceful and a little bit more fun. That seemed very serious. And a little bit overwhelming. Yeah. And a little bit. I don't know. It, it felt a little I bit just more, really didn't but, like it. Oh, what didn't you like? I don't know. I just didn't like the whole vibe of it. Just felt really weird in there. Did it? Yeah. I just didn't like. I just. I felt like I felt like I couldn't really like ask my questions and stuff because she was so. Talked. Do you know what I mean? Like she was talking talk, over you a she lot. Did talk over. And that's. I'm not trying to disrespect her or anything because obviously she's a doctor, but it just felt like we couldn't really have a conversation. It was very like talking at you. Do you know what I mean? Like I couldn't really. I thought her, her approach was extremely stern. I, uh, yeah, com I even felt that with what's the assistant's name? I don't know, but she's lovely. She, yeah, she no, she's amazing, and she oh, she was... was really 
with the other lady, she was sort of like as equally speaking. Mm. She had like the, the other doctor would speak and then she would speak. I think because she's and, probably new. That and with this lady, out. it's like she couldn't speak. Couldn't speak. And I feel really overwhelmed about like all like, oh, my BMI and everything as well. Do you know what I mean? Because... What's the BMI? Like, you... oh, you've got to lose weight to have a baby and stuff. I don't I really like, like I am um, trying, do you know what I mean? <laughs> Not all the time, but I just don't oh, like, I don't like when, obviously, I feel like, obviously weight's a really like sensitive thing, but I just feel like, you know, with someone telling you that you've got to lose, like, oh, you need to go on a diet, it's not a nice feeling. Do you know what I mean? Mm. I mean, she's obviously just saying it from a medical I know, I know, I know, but I'm but just saying it's as like a woman, way, it's, yeah, it's yeah. very, like, it's very sensitive for someone, like, it's like when someone tells you to do something, you don't really want to do it. And I'm not saying, like, that's the case, but that's, it's the feeling of, like, someone telling you what you've got to do about your body. And I get that, obviously, we're going for IVF and they're going to give us the best advice because, you know, if I had a lower BMI, you know, I could be more susceptible to being pregnant, but it's just not a very nice feeling to think, oh, you've got to go and lose weight. Because obviously it's quite a triggering subject for me because, you know, I have lost two stone already. Wait, so. What was the weight last time when you went in? No, because they never mentioned that before. That wasn't yeah, what was funny? And I, and we I, were identical. You were 71, I was 71. Yeah. Well, that's what I just suspect my weight is, but oh. could even be a bit more than that. Do you know what I mean? No, yeah, but I just feel it's not before. a very. No, it wasn't. And I was, and I would have been a lot heavier. As oh well. no, I know why. Because we weren't going fry there. No, that's what I just said. Yeah, we we're but going I'm, to fry you, are But I mean, it's just not a very nice thing because when you've already lost weight and when you're very triggered by weight, and obviously weight's mm. always been a really hard thing for me. It's not. It's almost like triggers you back to like times where people have told you that you need to lose weight and stuff before, mm. like just unearths certain feelings like when i used to do singing and stuff and you know i'd get told oh you, you need to lose weight if you need to do this mm. like it's what i've been told the whole time i've been growing up so when it comes to having a baby it's just not nice because i do find it challenging to obviously lose weight and stuff so i just didn't like that whole vibe at the appointment <clears throat> and i feel like nothing was <clears throat> like it, everything was explained but i didn't understand it like the most i learned was Last night, when I spoke to my friend who's going through IVF, and she voice noted, and right. I think I think the the lady who's been in the appointments the whole time, the assistant, I think she picked up the vibe that we were weren't, weren't really getting it. Well, what I didn't understand, it's like this 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 is this is what was this weird, right? She goes right. This is this is how the test's gonna go. You're gonna have to have twenty five milligrams, uh, no, uh, fifty yeah, milligrams an hour, right? right? And she says you must. Do you know this? Do you must know this? And I'm like, Surely we're having the, the test. We're having the test here, and then like, it's like, like, remember, this is what you must explain. I'm like, it, we're having the test here. Like, I. Why do we need to? We know just the, need. The only, we thing, just need to <laughs> the only thing we need to know is just no water. Eight hours. No, no the food. Eight hours for no water. Stop taking the tablet two days before. So I got that, but it was the. <laughs> it was the you must know this test. I'm like, no, no. I don't get why I need to know the test because the lady next to you is doing the test. Mm. Do you get it? That's what I was trying to get <laughs> with a little bit of humour. God, it's really hot in here. That personally felt so triggering in every way. It feels like one of those things where, you know, when you start, it's like if you went and started something new and you did it and the first time you really hated it, you just thought, I just want to set this all off now. That is truly how I feel. Yeah, well... I get that totally. And I feel, because there's so much that was said that I don't understand, I feel so overwhelmed that I don't want to do any of it. I, I, what we've got to understand is we are, we are ha like, we're in another country and it is like an international person explaining it to us. She has had her ways of working, the other woman had other ways of working and I think she felt like she was, you know, she was doing great. She felt like she's giving all of this value and information, which she was. So I don't think we can just completely pick up on the way that she was telling us. No, I don't. It's not. Not. I'm not saying it's just her or anything. I just. It was all just so much. It's all so much to think about. And even going back to endometriosis and stuff again, which for our whole cycle of IUI wasn't a thing because it was eradicated. It was like no, 
that's not that's not a problem and now yeah. that's back up and it's like oh no it has been six years so even now like by saying oh look you you know you you could have potentially have this for three months and even now i'm thinking and then another, you know, what, a month before this, and then three months of trying that before doing that. Mm. I know we can't just sit here and go, look, we we want the baby, we want the baby now. But I was kind of, Happy. I was kind of set in that they would go in there, and we would just basically ask a couple of questions like, what, how much yeah. is it? When can we start? And you know, what drugs does it have to take? And then you sort of just tackle it as it come, and then like the next day they'll go, look, you can start doing this. I mean, obviously, it is good to know the whole process, um, but I feel like I've got a a degree in it now without actually understanding any of it mm. so my understanding is in in time wise you've got to wait a month then you've got to sort of wait a month ish for your first cycle but you've got to that sort of just a discarded cycle the first round of IV, ivf you've got to discard that because there could be issues and then you start the second one we will you'll start taking that those tablets we will call sanitas sanitas Sanitas, which is our insurance out here, get booked in with that. Have the insulin test here. I'm a bit depressed. Need coffee. I'm very positive. It was a very successful meeting. What? <laughs> very successful meeting. It's so annoying. Really, really happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Just rounding it off. We can't just sit here and be like, "Yeah." That's f***ing true. See you I'm telling the, the truth. Time. I'm telling how I felt. So, the first appointment wasn't really what we expected. Not what I expected anyway. No, neither I found, me. I, I'm just going to be totally honest on every level, but I just found that very triggering. In a lot of ways, overwhelming, triggering, confusing a little bit stirred, just a bit of a different kind of approach and that's nothing against the clinic or the doctors, it's just how I receive the energy, that's it. And I think, yeah, I just found it all a bit much. Just a quick question before we finish off. Do you know, like, if we could just say, like, next month you can have a round of IUI, would you just, would you try that again? No. You wouldn't? I've got to do all of the injections, go through all the long process again. I think it's just too much. Mm. So I feel like IUI just... personally is in the wind because it's basically <laughs> just the same as having sex. It is. Okay, guys, Tay has just showed me this product, which is the company Natural Cycles. Who we're partnering with on this video. Yes. So basically, this thermometer, if Taylor uses this every single day in the morning and then also enters in her details related to her cycle, how she's feeling, her period, and all that information into the Natural Cycles app. It uses its algorithm to then tell you on which day you're likely to be fertile, mm -hmm. days that are unfertile days. So basically with that information that we can be way more accurate mm. than what we've been doing with... Well, we've been using an app at the minute, which is basically just a, way, a way less advanced version of this because we're not tracking by temperature. And no. what I didn't realise, which a lot of people have been telling me through Instagram, um, is that everything is obviously a lot more accurate when you're tracking your body temperature. So natural cycles is an amazing way to prevent pregnancy. If you're on a, a journey where you're not ready to be a parent yet, and you know, you're, you're trying to do everything more naturally, like not on the contraceptive pill or any other methods. Um, or if you're like us and you are wanting to, um, what you're trying to conceive and you're, you're wanting to plan to have a baby, obviously you need to know your fertile days. And this is like a way more accurate way of predicting those days in your yeah. cycle. Check you get out like the statistics as well on the, on the contraceptive side of things, because I was reading through that now and it's crazy as a natural alternative way for contraceptive. So yeah, I wish we'd use it sooner, but we're getting started now. Basically I have to read my temperature, add that into the app, input your data, and then it's basically gonna do all of the work for you so you can predict you know, when to do the deed or not, <laughs> or not, or definitely not. Um, and not I a fertile day, let's not bother. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is legit. Wasted time. <laughs> we also have a code as well, which is, <laughs> hilarious, T-A-A-Y, 
and that's going to get you 20% off the annual subscription and you get your thermometer included in that. So this is basically just a way more ad advanced version than probably some of the apps that you guys are using already. So yeah, I thought we'd share that with you. So I've just been to the toilet, I've come back out and I said today don't take the test of art filming. You actually just came in, so I just came in and I needed a wee straight away and I thought mm, I don't want to wait for him to say oh we can film it now because I know he's going to have to do his hair, get ready and all of that. <laughs> and I just thought I, I can't do the pregnancy test because then he'll know I've done it because it's you know just one test and it's in the box and it's near the door. And I thought oh I've got ovulation kits. And I just thought, oh, do you know what, I'm just going to do one. I'm just going to do one before the, the pregnancy test because I can't be asked to wait for him and being impatient. Um, even though I don't really care because I'm thinking in my head, it's, I know it's not. I don't, I, don't, I don't get it. So why would an ovulation stick show that you're pregnant? It's the same thing that you look for when you're ovulating to when you're pregnant. You're looking for a surge of a hormone, whatever it is, that comes up in your wee. Mm. And it's the same one that keeps rising and rising as you actually get pregnant. But it's not possible that I could be ovulating. You come on your period two weeks after you ovulate. I just know. Anyway, I've just done it. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to get ready to do my look fantastic haul. So I'll just change my jumper. And I, when I was going to the wardrobe, I thought, oh, I'll just go and have a quick look at the stick. Anyway, I've gone to the stick. And I thought it's going to be a circle, which means no. And I just looked at the stick and literally my breath was like, I couldn't breathe. I mean, I'm not getting excited at this point, but also <coughs> I've, I've took a picture of it and I just sent it to my best friend and I said, Steph, can you just look at the flow chart and tell me why is my ovulation test got a smiley face on it? Could it be that I'm ovulating right now, even though I'm due on my period today, like today is my period due? And I sent her my flow app and she said, no, there's just no possible way. And she said, how I found out I was pregnant was an ovulation test. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm not getting excited. And she went, I've got a feeling that you are. I've just got a feeling. And I'm like, well, I'm not getting excited. And she said to me the other day, the month I was going for my IVF appointment, I found out I was pregnant. And I went, well, I know I'm not. There's no point. I can't be asked. I've not even done an ovulation test this month. In fact, that's a lie. I did one on the 28th and it was a circle, which meant today would be my two week wait. And my ovulation test, when I'm the day I'm during my period, is got a big smiley face on it. So unless by some weird that's going on, then I, I think I might be pregnant. Which <laughs> so so now I've run out of wee, so we can't do a test. So should we just go and drink loads of water and do a test? Mm, I, I didn't know. know whether to tell you or not because I, I just really didn't. Did a test I just didn't. Me. Well, it's not a real test, and I just thought it's going to be a no anyway. So I just thought, oh, I'll just do it. Oh, I'm shaking. My hands are like... I think we should just drink loads of water now and do a wee. I wish I'd saved it. But you were coming in and you went, you're not doing that pregnancy test, are you? And I just got the cup, shoved it under the bum washer. And then you came in and I moved to the sink because the test was right next to the toilet. And then as you came up... I don't know how. And then as you... Guys. Came, as you came in, I went like this. If you're trying like for baby and stuff now, there is nothing worse than not both having a look at it together. I want to see but it at the same time. But do you know why? Do you know why? It's because I'm so highly strung on the fact that it's just not yeah, happening. Yeah. Okay. But I'm not. Get, I'm not like I. I'm. I'm like shook, but I'm not getting excited. No, like my no, body no. won't allow it. I'm just weirded out. Like I've just texted stuff, and she's like, "I really think you are." She's like, "I feel sick." Do what you know are what? you actually going to do? If I wish you just took a pregnancy test, not the ovulation, because this is sort of like teasing us that it could be. Let me just show you on my phone. Okay. No. You've got a tag on your... Um... It's fine. I was just about to do my look fantastic call. So that just says you... That, that's just to say, are oh, you ovulating? Yeah. And can I just tell you something even crazier? I was just texting Steph. I just put, hey, 
Bay, are you there? Quick, come online. She put hi, I put right. So I'm doing my period today. So Jack said, let's pick up a test. She put stop. I put, I haven't done it because he <laughs> said, wait. She put, oh my God, okay. And I thought, mm, I'm going to be sneaky and do an ovulation test. She put, oh my God, okay. I put, because that shows pregnancy, doesn't it? And she put, yep, yeah, got shivers. That's what I did. Whole body tingling, show me. Sent her the screenshot and she put, oh my God, oh my God. I put, is it possible that I'm ovulating now this late when I'm doing my period today? She put, no, never, ever, no. And I put, are you absolutely sure? And she put, that's what I went by, is the ovulation test. I put, is it possible to be ovulating now? Are you absolutely sure? And she put, no. She put, if it shows HCG, it means you're pregnant. My friend who's a doctor has always told me, just use ovulation sticks, saves you money than doing pregnancy tests. I put, oh my God, am I pregnant? And she put, I'm crying inside. I think you are. Right. I'm not remember, laughing, I'm nervous. Do you nervous. remember a couple of weeks ago when I was in bed and I said to you, I don't know why, but I feel really sick. And I was putting my head over the thing and I was like, I feel really sick. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. Right. Well, I went onto a forum called Mum's Net, which I always go on. People write in and they go, oh my God, I'm, on, I'm day six DPO and I've got this symptom. And everyone writes down like, yeah, I think you could be positive, Janet. And you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, I love that. I went on there and I said, when I felt sick, really sick like that, and I, I never ever feel sick, I thought, this is bizarre. And it was only like three days after I ovulated and we had sex. So I felt really sick and I thought, is it possible to have conceived like super early within three days and when it's like happening, like the eggs touching the thing that you feel sick? And a few people said, yeah, and it's happened every time I've had a kid. I've always felt the conception happen like three days after anyway. So I thought, hmm. Just me, you know, like diving into any kind of symptom that I could possibly feel. At 10.25 on 28th February, which was that day, I put, okay, it is the 28th of February, 2022, and I think I might be pregnant. It's a bit crazy, but I'm feeling really nauseous, and I believe only a few days after conceiving, I never feel sick, and all day I felt seasick. Last night, too, with heartburn. I've read it's not impossible to feel sick straight after conception. I think it happened on Friday. That was the day I had the aching and the pulling feelings around my hip bones, and we had sex on the Thursday, the Friday, <laughs> on the Saturday. <laughs> Unintentionally. <laughs> And it was unintentional at all times. I took an ovulation test today and it's not ovulating, that's what I told you. So it's definitely already happened within the last few days. It makes me confident that it has happened in good timing with when we've had sex because I had definitely ovulated this month. I felt it. Please God, let this be my time. And I just pulled a card. <laughs> I just pulled a card online, like a psychic card, which says, be ready for change. And the picture was holding a baby. I think it might be happening. So can you actually just imagine if it is now? Should we, should we go and drink loads of water and then do a test? Okay, so we've been reading a little bit more. And um, right back. you can get an LH surge right before your period. So you're more hopeful now than you've been in years. I just want to keep the ovulation test and pretend now. Sorry, I've got your hopes up now. Nothing yet. Are you nervous? I get my ugly thumbs in it. What's, what's that doing? No, it, it takes five minutes. Oh, this is making me feel ill. Yeah, I feel I ill. This. I just. It's going to be better. Instead of like digital. Oh, I'm not pregnant. Oh, no. Ah. Oh. That's a sad ending. I was really excited with that. <laughs> I feel like I need to do another ovulation test now. I think just let's just stick to pregnancy tests mm -hmm. because that that's just got us absolutely hyped up. So you're still optimistic, are you? Well, this? I've been trying to for the last couple of hours. I've been on Mum's Net, the Flow app, Google. It's just not all making that sense to me. I'm only optimistic, not because I think I feel pregnant or anything like that. Just because I think it's bizarre that I've got a positive population test the day I'm during my period. We'll keep you posted. Yeah. Okay, guys, so now it is Monday the 14th of March. Um, we had the meeting on, was it Friday? So since then, we've been sort of talking and thinking about all of what was said that day. Mm -hmm. And it's made us feel a little bit feels a bit like a step back. It feels like probably like a six month process. They've got to have loads of different tests. 
Tay didn't want to do I IUI again because the chances aren't that high. It's like a 15% chance. My preference all along before IVF was, was, to, was to do IUI and do it another like, just do it as many times as we can. With any facility treatment like IUI or IVF, especially IVF, it's very controlled. It gives you like a certain sense of that it's gonna happen. Do you know what I mean? It's not like just having sex and actually trying to conceive. It kind of you into thinking oh my god am I am I not and you just you get kind of really suckered in because I feel like it's hard to go into any of those kind of things with the feelings of oh we'll just see what happens it's hard not to get really excited and focused on the outcome of it being a yes I found it hard in that way it wasn't so invasive in like terms of how the treatment made me feel physically it was more of the mental aspect it scares me a bit well, after the appointment on Friday, for me, the, the biggest trigger and kind of suffered all weekend for it was that oh, on top of all of the things that you're currently experiencing, like struggles with, you've got to lose weight, which is my biggest struggle in life. Like you guys and I have been on a, a weight loss journey and a health journey. Yeah, that really affected you didn't it well yeah because it's like anyway. taking one struggle and then adding another struggle yeah. As, yeah. as a cherry on top and you're like just feel like how's this even gonna happen now and but to me it's such a huge thing because it's my like i said it's, it's such a big challenge in my life like my weight is so up and down always has been mm. so i just felt like oh my, i just don't want another thing on top that i'm gonna find challenging because then it just becomes so mentally consuming for me yeah so Basically, we've had a discussion. I've said, why don't we just try IUI? That's my preference. It's relatively, I think what, what we'll do differently this time, if we can, is the first time we did it, it felt very like a, you know, like a big operation. I was obviously way, way too positive. Were you? I was too positive. I was like, yeah, it's, I didn't even hear 15%, to be honest. I heard like 99%, which was obviously misinformed. So we were basically... You made your... your yeah, I made it, which I'm not going to do this time. It's, oh, all, it's all well being positive, but that's just being deluded and... It's not being realistic. Not being realistic. And it's also so not fair on my be, expectations. No, I'm going to be less positive. <laughs> As well, with this new doctor, she was saying that you've got to have like these insulin tests, you've got to have this other test and all of these other different things, which feels a little bit like with IUI, you, you didn't have any of that. The weight wasn't an issue. You didn't have this insulin test. You didn't have this other test. It was just like, hey, would you like IUI? Mm. And here we go, off you go. Whereas this IVF seems like there's a long path before we even get to the IVF. Yeah. So we're thinking... And plus the fact she's talking about hyperstimulation with my eggs. And it was just like, oh, like the, the doctor said, and obviously she doesn't know our backstory so much, but she was just like, you know, we're not in any rush. We're not in any rush. And then the assistant, she kind of butted in at that point and was like, yeah, but it's, they, they're in a rush. They want yeah, this. And yeah. it's like... We're in a rush. We're on I two mean, different... We don't want to rush it. Yes, we but do. But we're like, what is the quickest route that we can possibly take? Yeah. So we, we're going to speak to the assistant. We're going to say, look, we're looking to do IUI. When is the earliest you can get us booked into IUI? Yeah, do you have a skiing holiday booked in for middle of April? But mm. if... if she can get us in any time after that. Let's say, for example, we're in on the 1st of May. We would have the IUI and we're going to treat it completely different. I mean, we weren't drinking, we weren't going out, we were staying still. Two or three days after the procedure, you were doing pregnancy tests. We just switched off for two weeks, like, right. No, know. we didn't live a normal life for no, two weeks. No, until the last day. And a lot of women we'll... don't when it's the, the two week wait. You no. just don't because you're just so, I when think... you're so fixated on wanting something, it's really hard not to feel like that. So we're going to completely flip it. We're, we're just going to say. It's not that easy. No, we, yeah, we're going to try. We don't know how, we don't know how this is going to go. Let's say it goes perfectly in terms of preparation mm. is that we go for the IUI. We just completely shut off, carry on as normal, and they say it doesn't work. We go, okay, no problem, when's the next one? And then they go three weeks or four weeks later, go for two or three. It is really, but it is really expensive, you know. It was a uh, thousand euro. No, it wasn't. It worked out with all of the injections and stuff that we had to buy. It was nearly 2,000 pounds. Was it? Yeah. 2,000 pounds yeah. in euros? Pounds. In the end, because we, I it? remember we added it all up. Well, I mean, it, 
it's, we got to do it, haven't we? No, but I'm just saying, we're saying we're going to do it one after the other, yeah. but... I, I think IVF, <laughs> I think IVF is, is probably going to be, what, 5,000, 10,000? IVF is 45% chance, mm. but realistic, that was like a five or six months yeah, away. Yeah, we don't want to wait that. Like, this yeah. is the last month to conceive, so that you would actually have a baby in this year. Be, I'd be very happy if you were pregnant Oh, I would, but I'm just saying, in December, like, like every single year, it, when it gets to Christmas, I'm like, great, another year, and I don't have a baby. Like, I always mm. just think that. And it's going to be like, oh my God, this year is another year now when we come to Christmas and it's half oh, still not pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the decision for now. We will keep you posted. I don't think that we're going to, we're, we're going to have a call with the HT clinic, but after that, I'm assuming there's going to be a bit of a break, break. now until probably the back end of April. So. And in between that, we are. We will keep, trying that to keep that. And trying still. that. Still. I mean, I'm doing all my, well, you can see this on my Instagram, but I'm doing all the ovulation tests. Yeah. doing all those kind of things so that's it so yeah. we will see you back with some more positive updates very soon adios